All right, here we go. Lesson 7-3, talking about similarity now and transformations. We've talked a lot about congruence over the first two lessons of this chapter, trying to make sure that we understand what the word congruence means, which again means exactly the same. Now we're going to talk, start, start talking about shapes that are similar. Similar means that the shapes are the same exact shape, but different sizes. The sizes of those shapes must be, the, the, the sides of the shapes must have ratios that are exactly the same so that the shapes are proportional which we'll get into a little bit in lesson 7-4 so for now we're just going to find different side lengths and then test to see if the ratios of those side lengths are the same so you're gonna have you're gonna have to know how long the different sides are sometimes the shapes are easy like the rectangles you'll see on the next page very straightforward very simple but sometimes they're triangles that are on the slant, so you're going to have to use that Pythagorean theorem or that distance formula to figure those lengths out and see if those, those sides have a ratio that is exactly the same. If the ratio is not the same for all the sides, well, then you do not have similar shapes. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So as we get into these problems, it says to determine if the two fig figures are similar by using transformations, and we have to explain our reasoning. So... We're looking at triangle ABC and triangle EFG. What we're going to do here is, I think everybody sees that if we translate this, this shape here, okay, they're not going to be exactly congruent. But we can, we can test to see if they're similar. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to find the lengths. I think everybody would agree that GF should match up, big question mark over that, should match up with BC. So let's check. Let's find out. The distance between CB, we could use the Pythagorean theorem to test this right triangle. 2 squared plus 2 squared equals C squared. 4 plus 4 equals 8. Okay, what's the square root 8? I don't know. So instead of finding the square root 8 and getting this crazy decimal, let's just write the square root of 8. Let's just leave it there. Okay, now let's test FG. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. We've got 4 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. 16 plus 16 equals C squared. Now we have the square root of 32. So the ratio of those two sides, we'll do the big side over the little side. We have the square root of 32 over the square root of 8. Okay, now, is that ratio the same as these other ratios of these other sides? I don't know. Let's check. So let's check AC here. We'll do it in blue. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. So we have 4 and we have 3. And for all of you that have been studying those Pythagorean triples, we know that AC is 5. So AC is 5. Okay, now let's check GDE. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, again, studying those Pythagorean triples, you are talking about from a, a 3, 4, 5 is also a 6, 8, 10. If you don't trust me on those numbers, go ahead and check your Pythagorean theorem. So now we have a ratio that is 10 over 5. 10 over 5, does that equal the square root of 32 divided by the square root of 8? Well, we all know that, the, that 10 divided by 5 is 2. This answer right here is 2. What is the answer to the square root of 32 divided by the square root of 8? I'm not sure. So you would take out a calculator and you would check that. So if we take out a calculator and check, so when we check that, we get the square root of 32 over the square root of 8 is 2. So those two answers are both 2. So that means you've got one more side to check. So we're going to check the, the big side here and this other side here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. So it's 2 and 5. Again, Pythagorean theorem, 2 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. You end up with the square root of 29. Okay? So the square root of 29 is that small side. We're going to put that down here, the square root of 29. Okay, what about this big side? we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we got 4 and 10. Now look, 
Here's another way you can do this without using the Pythagorean Theorem. You had 4 and 2. Let me get rid of some of this clutter so you guys can see exactly what I'm saying. So what I was saying was, check out this, check out what we have here. We have 4 and 2 and 5 and 10 here. Those are those ratios are 2 and 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I think you can see just by looking at the legs of the right triangles that if these that if these here have a ratio of 2, then I bet that these sides here have a ratio of 2 as well. So what we've learned here is that all of these all of these sides that would go together have a ratio of 2. And so what does that tell you? That tells you that these two triangles are similar. They're not exactly the same. They're not congruent, but they're similar. So when you're answering the question, determine if the two figures are similar by using transformations, well, if we slide this one, if we slide this C on top of this G so they match up, and we test those ratios, these two are definitely similar. Now, that's one of the hardest ones you're going to see, guys. Those triangles, the hardest one you're going to see. When you look at something a little, a little more straightforward, like rectangles, if we rotate this S down on top of this V, let's see if they would match up. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Change the blue so you guys can see it better. So that these two sides would be 10. So those ratios match up. Rectangles, opposite sides are congruent, so 10 and 10. Now these ones are 3 and 3 and 3 and 3. So those ratios all go together. Okay, the sides, these two are not actually, these two, however, are not actually similar. Okay, they're actually congruent. Okay, so that so that's, a little, that's a little, one of those little differences. You gotta make sure you know what the difference between congruent and similar is. Very interesting stuff. Again, just testing ratios of sides, definitely a big part of this. Right here on this one, you've got one, two, you got one, two, three, four, five here. You've got one, two, three, four here. Going up this side, you got one, two, three, four, five, six. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. You see here, the ratio here, six over six is 1, but 5 over 4 is not 1. These two are not similar. Okay, so you want to test those, we want to test those, the ratios of those sides to check to see if you're doing it right. Okay, you can see sometimes really tricky with the slanted triangles, sometimes pretty straightforward. We don't even have to check the slant here. We don't have to check this slant here because we know already that they're not proportional and they don't their ratios do not match up. Okay? Now the last kind of problem you're gonna see in in this type of in this type of stuff is where they give you something and they want you to use a scale factor. Well guys, this is just old this is old stuff. You guys can handle this. You guys have been doing scale factors for weeks now, right? She's got a copy of a picture that's two inches by two and a half. She uses the copy machine to enlarge it by a factor of 4, and then she projects it on the wall at a factor of 12. So what are you going to do? All you're doing is two dilations. 2 by 2.5 is the size of the picture. What are you going to do first? You're going to multiply it by 4. So you multiply both numbers by 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. 2 and a half times 4 is 10. Now it's an 8 by 10 picture. Then she's going to project it on her wall at a scale factor of 12. So what do you do with these numbers? You multiply them by 12. 8 times 12 is 96 and 10 times 12 is 120 it says what are the dimensions of the mural here are the dimensions of the mural right here it's a 96 by 120 inch mural now it says are the pictures similar absolutely those are definitely similar because you used a dilation to make them bigger and the same scale factor all the time always multiplying always having that same ratio you can check by going hey 8 divided by 2 is 4 10 divided by 2 and a half. Hey, that's 4, 2. 
96 divided by 8, that's 12. So is 120 divided by 10, that's also 12. See, all those ratios are the same, so it's definitely similar. The Mr. Fletcher problem down here, same idea. 0.5 millimeter section of a plant, then he enlarges it by a scale factor of 10, which turns it into 5 millimeters. Then he, he uses the camera on the microscope to photograph at a scale factor of 20, so 5 times 20 is 100. And then the length of the section of the plant in the photograph is 100, make sure we get that unit please, millimeters. Okay, so that's all that those word problems are. Don't get overwhelmed by the, by the story. Let's just make sure we take care of what we're supposed to do, which is to see what lengths these would become. Again, multiplying by scale factors greater than 1, you know that everything's going to get bigger. If it's between 0 and 1, then you know it's going to get smaller. Okay, so just as a recap of what we're doing today, we are testing to see if things are similar by testing the ratios of their sides. We went through, and if you if you go back and rewind to this problem right here, you'll see all the writing that I had. Remember, I had to erase it to get it so it wasn't so cluttered. So you have that problem where we had to test those sides using the Pythagorean theorem because they were slanted. We got some we got some rectangles that were a lot easier because they were the exact same. Okay, so similar figures and congruent figures there. And then down here, these were not similar because the ratios didn't match up. We had a 5 to 4, and we had a 6 to 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1, 5 divided by 4 is not. So that's, your, that's Lesson 7-3 in a nutshell. If you got any questions, make sure you let me know.